Hi, I'm Wes Allen with DM Tales, and Ecclesicon is over, and I am exhausted. But here's some final thoughts on the convention. Let's roll it. Okay, so I'm just doing this stream of conscious. I don't have a map or any kind of notes written up. I just wanted to give a couple of impressions on my experience running my first con. It was an absolute blast. So we had, I think all told, about 50 players finally showed up. Up. They weren't all there at the same time. I had some people who were just coming Friday and Saturday and some people who just showed up on Sunday. And uh, it actually worked out really, really well. We did have a couple of tables that got canceled on Sunday. And that just meant that the tables that did exist had full player complements. So that actually worked out really well as well. It was an exciting time. I got to uh, meet some folks in person that I had only talked to online a couple of times. I got to have some fun with Avenue Studios again. Dave Ward from Grimwood Games came down from Maine. He actually stayed in my house. And I had someone from my basic fantasy RPG campaign who has been playing with us for three years, but lives in Atlanta, Georgia, or just outside Atlanta, Georgia. He flew up so that we could play in person for the first time. So I played basic fantasy RPG in person for the first time. That was all really, really cool. The breadth of games, I think, as I said, in all of my updates at this point was just phenomenal. So you had 5e was represented. You had older school versions of Dungeons and Dragons like BX and 2nd Edition AD&D. These were really, really cool. And the adventures were really well done. Somebody ran through Keep on the Borderlands, which is the first adventure module that I ever read. So I really appreciated that it was there. <sighs> but beyond that, we had Savage Worlds. We had Open Legend. We had Fabula Ultima. We had Easy D6. I ran Basic Fantasy RPG. And there was Troubleshooters and Everyday Heroes. And what else did I run? I read No Thank You Evil. It was just so cool to see all of these games come together and to see what came out of them. Didn't shout out enough to Dave Ward from Grimwood Games. He ran a couple play tests of his new system. It was universally adored, at least as far as anybody I talked to really liked it. He came up with some tweaks because the players at the table were breaking it, which he always appreciates. And uh, he's got some changes to the game because he ran it at Ecclesicon. And I'm really looking forward to this coming out to market because Grimwood City and the Ironbound system is really, really cool. It is a an almost perfect blend of tactical combat uh, and resource management based on your stats that you get from something like Numenera and just kind of freewheeling that you can throw a lot of role play into if you want to. Very well done. When you see Ironbound come out, when you see Grimwood City come out uh, in print, it's going to come out as an easy D6 setting first. Just go pick it up because it's it's going to be worth it. It's a really neat thing. And then on Saturday night, we had a Pathfinder 2E funnel, which was just absolutely hysterical. And apparently, yes, there are zero level characters that are in the, the Game Master's Guide for Pathfinder 2E. Do not let Jacob... Uh, from Avenue Studios hear anyone say otherwise because they're right in the rules. He's shocked that no one's ever gotten it before. And his funnel was absolutely hysterical. Ten players played and they were engaged the entire time, right up until just before 11 o'clock. So really, really cool. So there are some things that I can learn from this first experience. First, uh, I'm going to leverage the tools that are built into tabletop events a lot more. So instead of me getting people to sign up for volunteer shifts and then have to put them in by hand, I'll just let them do that right through tabletop events and I'll keep track of it that way. Also, I will have event submissions instead of me trying to make a schedule. I'll set certain start times and people can throw their events into their into tabletop events directly and we'll schedule it through there. So these are all things that I just kind of learned from using these tools the first time. Do you want to schedule a couple of off times for breaks, especially in a microcon like Ecclesicon? So that's really where I'm kind of calling it because it's not really a small con. 
uh, having set breaks where there's just everything shuts down and people can either go and go out and get, grab something to eat or just sit down and talk or go to a snack and sit down uh, and have a break in between sessions so they can prep for whatever comes next. That was something that folks had said that's something they'd really appreciate. So we'll try to get that in there next year as well. Do want to have things like uh, an on-site map so people know where things are and a uh, schedule in the handout so that folks know when like the seminars are going on. Uh, one seminar was okay attended, the other two basically had nobody there and that's basically all on me. And so that was something that I just learned going through the process. I will say that if you are trying to run any type of small event like this, especially a multi-day event, have good volunteers. If I didn't have good volunteers and the number of volunteers that I had, it would have been an absolute mess. But I did have some really good volunteers. They ran the snack bar, they checked folks in, they made sure that folks just weren't wandering through the church building at random. And I am really appreciative of all of them. I'm also really thankful for the Nintendads podcast who came. I was on their podcast a couple of weeks back. I still haven't seen the episode as a matter of fact. But I'm going to put a link to them uh, in the description below. Go check them out. It's really, really cool. And Preston, who's one of the Nintendo dads, is a resident of the town that I am in. So he came and was just kind of talking with his partner and showing off his podcast and getting people to sign up. That was really cool. And also Ron from Philly Area Gaming Expo, or Page. He was there uh, promoting Page 2. He had Phil E. Cheesesteak, who is the mascot for Page there as well. Just a generous, generous guy, um, was really supportive of the event from the moment that he heard about it, showed up, ran a game, uh, showed me his notes for his game before he ran it. I was so happy that he showed me that. It was kind of cool to get behind the curtain. And I really had a wonderful time talking to him. And also Dave from Gamers on Games, he came down and uh, I was just going to let him in for free because he was basically just doing promotional stuff for it. He wasn't sitting down to play a game, although he should have, Dave. Um, and I, I you know, he was like, no, 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 this, you're raising money for some good causes. I want to want to actually pay. So he, he stuck around, took some great photos, shared them with me, did some really nice uh, videos and stuff. I'm going to link to Gamers on Games down below as well. So thank you to everybody for all that you did. Will there be a second one? That is the question that folks are coming up with. Everyone has said, yeah, you, you need to do this again. So yeah, we're planning on a second, uh, Ecclesicon 25, as you will. And uh, that's going to take place, we're looking right now, probably the last weekend in March. We're going to see where things fall with other events in the area. But that's a good fit. Easter's so late last year or next year that uh, I can't have it the same weekend because it literally would run into Holy Week. And um, that would not be good given my vocation. I would be unconscious by the time it got done. Um, so a couple weeks beforehand is probably where we're going to go, and we'll take a look at that. I expect the announcement to come out pretty, pretty soon, as all the volunteers and people who have already have ideas for next year start working on a shared document together so that we can put this all together. That should be fun. In the meantime, this coming fall, probably in the November time frame, really, really early in November, like just after Halloween, I'm probably going to run what previously had been one-shot days. Uh, it's just an afternoon where we set up a few tables for anybody who wants to come and run, and we try to get some players to come out and play. And typically, maybe 30 people will show up, maybe a few more now that we have a larger pool of, of potential players. And um, we're going to set that up, just do like an Ecclesicon one day or Ecclesicon one shot. And it'll just be a couple hours on a Saturday afternoon. So if anybody wants to come out with that, if that's something that you are interested in, go ahead and leave a comment for that below. And then finally, I would like to continue to do some fundraising uh, for local helping organizations like the Food Pantry, because they are often underfunded. They are under advertised. People don't know that they exist and that they are potential organizations that they can donate to that do really good work that help this area be much more livable for people who are either on the fringes or kind of in the falling through the cracks. And so I think what I'm going to do is I continue to process. I am still basically exhausted. After I do this video, I'm going to just pass out for an hour or so. Um, but I'm going to work at the process of how to do live play actual streams that become fundraisers. Can't do it right through YouTube right now because I'm about 7,000 subscribers short 
of actually being able to do that. So I'll have to find another mechanism by which we do the fundraising. But that's something that I would like to do. Uh, start with the food pantry because that is definitely part of what we've already been about. But there's an emergency housing system around here. There are shelters around here. There are um, drug rehab centers around here. There are domestic abuse shelters around here that could use the publicity, that could use the gifts, that could use the donations. And it's a way of letting me use my hobby to do something good for somebody else which is kind of what Ecclesiacon was about in the first place. So that's what I'm looking at doing because this event was so successful. So thank you to everybody who came, who everybody supported, for everybody who encouraged me through this whole process. I loved meeting all of you. It was an incredible time. I love the connections that got made because of it. Uh, just so much fun. People that I've been interacting with, for example, in the Basic Fantasy Forum for a number of years. Uh, John Frederick, he came down. Uh, I had him on the stream. I've seen him on digital, but never in person. He came down and actually played some games. That was a lot of fun. So this was a really cool time for me. And I will tell you this. Before the event... Because anytime you're running something new like this, it's easy to get very discouraged. You know, registrations aren't happening as fast as you want. It's a lot of stress to come up with the volunteers. Um, you know, you have games get canceled. Other games have to get res restructured. Um, people are upset about one thing or another. I didn't have a whole lot of that this time. And about two weeks before the event happened, I was convinced that if we ever did a Ecclesiacon again, it was only going to be a one-day event because... The three days weren't worth it. Nobody was going to come on Friday. Nobody was going to come on Sunday. And it would be boring and low energy and everybody would be tired. And wow, holy smokes, was I proven wrong. Uh, uh, folks came out on Friday and it, yeah, it wasn't as big as the Saturday events were, but uh, it was still pretty full and there was a great energy to the game and people had a ton of fun. So Everybody who encouraged me to, to continue on this journey until it actually happened, thank you so much. And thank you for letting me get over my imposter syndrome so that we could actually do something that was really, really fun. So I had a great time. I will also want to shout out two more things before we close up. First, I flat out love running Easy D6 in person. It is an absolute blast. And this was the third time that I've run the adventure Hometown Harvest. I think folks had a really good time. I love how people interpret the different characters because it is a preset uh, roster of characters. I love how they interpret them different in every playthrough that I've had. People have come up with the different solutions to things. I will say that when I have a full table, I do need to throw more creatures at things or buff up attacks or their health at some point because there wasn't a whole lot of danger to the party, but they had an absolute blast. It was cool. Um, and it was really, really neat. So I love running Easy D6. If you have not tried Easy D6 out, go pick up the book because you will absolutely adore it. I At least I think so. And you can check out my reviews of Easy D6 on my channel. Maybe I'll put it up here or here in the link below. I have a couple of videos on it. Uh, and it's it's really, really fun. A uh, second, I do want to thank uh, Spider Mind. Is it Spider Mind? Yeah, Spider Mind Games. Uh, I got their uh, tabletop digital, which literally are legs that go into the Visa mount on the back that stick out and support a TV without it, you know, being out of balance. And uh, it worked beautifully. Uh, it's a little higher than I was expecting but it was really, really cool. And this was literally a product that I had been looking for from the moment I decided I wanted to switch from online and start doing some in-person gaming after the pandemic kind of wound down and we were able to do things in person again. Um, it was a really, really cool product. It's not perfect. I think I'm going to do a little bit of, re of a review on it. I do want to talk with them a little bit about the product, um, but man, it's so good. Uh, it was just nice to be able to put the TV on there, have it prop up. It gets out of the way. Pe people can put their books and their sheets uh, underneath it. And it just worked really, really well. So thank you so much for that. And I will also say that it looked like it wasn't going to ship in time. And I reached out to them and saying, hey, I kind of need this for this convention this weekend. And they jumped 
right to onto the case and said, yep, it's going out tomorrow. It will be there before the convention. So thank you so much to them for their great customer service and this really cool product. Uh, really, really neat. Like I said, I'll be doing a review of that in the future. Coming up, I have the Dragon Bane Bestiary sitting in my bag. It is waiting for me to write my review on it. It is starting to percolate in my head, but right now I am so tired uh, that anytime I'm trying to think of doing something long-term or big project, I just kind of immediately fall asleep. So it is coming. It is the next one to come out. After that, I will have the origin. And then I think I think I'm going to look at Household because I started reading that book. I'm about a third of the way through, and it's a really, really cool setting. I also have The Dark Places and Demogorgons old, for Old School Essentials that's sitting on my shelf that I do want to read. And there's so much more out there for me to still read, review, and bring to the channel. So thank you, everybody, for all your support, all your encouragement, for everything that anyone did for Ecclesiacon. It was a great experience for me. I am absolutely wiped, but wow, am I excited by it. And until we see each other again, folks, happy playing, everyone.